guys welcome back to my channel I just want to show you briefly the items I'm going to work with for this video I'm going to make three DIYs but first I have to paint and do some stuff with these items I'm going to use some other things also but these are the ones that are going to be modified in some way before I uh, finish my DIYs so I'll see you in a while Today's video is part of the Try It Tuesday Challenge. It's hosted by Unicorn Dust Designs. Her co-host this month is Rebecca Virginia DIY. This challenge is about choosing a DIYer that you admire and trying to recreate or make your version of three of her DIYs, of their DIYs. I am choosing Mondas from Mondas like I have made because I really, really admire her. She's beautiful inside and out and she's an amazing crafter. So I'm going to leave the link to her channel and to the three videos where you can find the items I'm going to recreate in the description box. I'm also leaving the link to the hostess channels and to the playlist with all the videos that are going to be entering this challenge. The first item is this so very cute picture holder. So I'm going to do a version of it and let's get into it. I'm using, I'm going in this video as usual I'm going to use a lot of items that my daughter and I found, found in the dumpster. As, w as it happens with this wire, we are dumpster divers, our channels is a uh, channel, sorry, dumpster chicks is going to be linked in the description box also. So I'm going to use this wire. I'm going to use this marker because I'm going to twist the wire around the marker to make kind of a spiral, like so. Of course I have it already finished. This is what I got. And I painted, I spray painted this with this paint, flat soft iron from Rustolium, my favorite brand. And I also have these little hearts They are wooden and I have had them from I think 2008, 9. <laughs> they were red, I, I painted them in white and the picture cracked, I don't know why, but doesn't look bad so I'm going to use them. I haven't tried this so <laughs> fingers crossed it's going to work as I envision it. As a base I'm using this uh, cork this is the lid of a candle and a candle jar. The jar was broken. It's also from the dumpster. So I'm using this as a base. I'm using this piece of slice of wood from Dollar Tree and a little bit of um, twine around it to make it more fancy. <laughs> using a screw, I made a hole, not too deep, just a little bit to insert this wire but first I'm going to try to glue the hearts to assemble my picture holder I'm going to use hot glue and I hope it will work otherwise I will have to add some B6000. Let me see. I have to leave some space open to insert the picture. So let's see if it works. If not, I will consider this a fail and I will try some other way. But let's w oh, hope. Let's wait a minute. I was going to say let's wait a minute for it to dry. Let's hope it's going to work. I'm going to add hot glue to the, the hole also to fix the, the wire. Okay. 
There we go. Am I in frame? Yes. So let's insert this. I think it's okay. Let's straighten this. And now, the moment of truth. I have this picture of a great friend of mine and I'm going to place it here. I love her to pieces. So. Yay! It worked! It worked! <laughs> so, one DIY finish, <coughs> as you can see, is so easy and, and I think it's a really cute idea. So let's move on to another DIY. <coughs> Sorry, I have a problem in my throat lately. I'm going to make an oil and vinegar bottles. As I showed you in the first part, um, I had the bottles. They were green, if you remember that. I spray painted them in white, so uh, I had to find a way for me to see how much content I still had in the bottles. So what I did was I added some masking tape before painting and now I have to remove it very carefully not to ruin the borders of the painted area. Here we go, slowly, 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 and here we have the bottle paint. This is also very simple. After painting it, I printed these words, balsamic vinegar and canola oil on um, bellum paper. I always tell you the same. If you're going to transfer something on a white surface, use bellum paper because, and it happened to me when I was doing this, if by any chance, oh it's, I have to clean this, the paper moves, and it happened to me even though I was holding them in place with the masking tape, the paper moved, and I hope you can see the, the effect, so I can immediately reposition the paper to where I want it to be or to where I was working previously and see where the part I was transferring has to be. So after, well of course I went on the back to transfer it, I went on the back with a pencil on all the letters and the, these lines, the same here, this is the front and this is the back where I went around the letters with a pencil. I transferred it and then using this marker, Craftsmart, is, uh, I, I love this marker. And uh, it, it has a, a very um, thick but thin trace. I, 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 I don't know if I'm explaining myself. It's thick but thin enough that it's not really, really thick. So this is what I used and I decorated the um, bottles and wrote the content. Oh, I forgot something. Let's go back to the, to the other one. I wanted to add this little bow to the front of the heart to match the twine at the bottom. Sorry about that. I saw the, the bow now and I remember. So let me do this. So it's another little detail and here it's complete. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go back to this. I'm going to add some of this burlap ribbon on top of each bottleneck. as a detail because my house is all decorated and my kitchen especially and this is going to my kitchen obviously um, is decorated in farmhouse style so 
there is a buffalo check ribbon everywhere in my kitchen. So I'm not making a bow because it's going to make hard to um, handle the, the bottles. So it's just a detail. Here we go. I'm going to add the other one later before showing you everything at the end. And I bought on Amazon these dispensers for the oil and the vinegar that go on top of each bottle. Again, I'm going to add the other one later. But you will see the final result in the end. And I was looking for some dish or plate where to place these two bottles. I will probably buy some butter dish or soap dish but for now, for the time being, I had to use what I had at hand. So I had these lids from all Tupperwares that I'm not using. I don't have them anymore. So I cut this flap from one of them and I painted it white. I just spray painted it white. And then using this marker, which is absolutely awesome, I went all around to make this border. The only thing I use for this border is this marker. It's Sharpie King Size. I highly recommend it. And has a lot of ink because I've been using it and using it and it never ends. So now I'm going to place these two bottles here. I'm also planning on finding some piece of acetate or plastic that is, has to be clear. In the, to place it in the bottom uh, because you know you can uh, have to deal with some drops of vinegar or or especially oil and I don't want to ruin this bottom before I can get some other thing. So this is another DIY that um, my friend <laughs> mom does made that I'm recreating in some way. And I'm hurrying up because I have another thing that is really big and it may take more time to explain, to show. You saw in the first part that I'm going to work with this basket. Let me... I'm going to move the camera because it's impossible to put it in frame. Here we go. This is a bushel bushel, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, basket that my daughter and I found in the dumpster at Michael's. It's, it's one of those baskets that they have in the store with flowers and greenery. And they discarded it and we were there to pick it up. So, I spray painted it white. As you can see, I left these two pieces uh, and this, without distressing, because I wanted to show you how they looked. I spray painted them in white, then I made some grey paint, make, mixing black and white in a jar, and I painted every piece that goes around, I don't know how you call it, those bands that go, go around, and to look for the brush and I gave them a coat of great paint like so. I, I placed some masking tape to protect the white part that I don't want to paint in grey. And then I let it dry and I dry brushed all the areas in white. If you're wondering how do you dry brush something, well, it's really easy. I don't know where to put this. Um, okay. It's really, really easy. You just have to take some paint of the color you're, you're wanting to use 
I have this paint is also from the dumpster, didn't have the lid, so I place this foil on top. So this is what I'm using. You have to pick just a little bit of paint, almost nothing. You have to use the worst brush you have. The more um, used and, and bad it is, the better for dry brushing. So you pick a little bit of paint. This is and too much and you have to dab it till there is almost no paint in the brush and then you take the area you wanna this is not dry it's not going to work here you pick an area that you want to dry brush and you just make some lines as you can see I'm not painting I'm just making some lines and that's the effect that you get. You see? Dry brushing is really, really, really easy. Another thing I did... Oh, I have paint everywhere. Was to um, distress all these pieces of wood with black, with black paint. But I didn't have chalk ink or anything else to dry brush, to, sorry, to distress. So <laughs> I came up with the, the idea of using, this is a distress ink, but in fact it's more like um, rubber stamps ink. Let me show you. It's distress ink from G Tim Holtz, sorry. So I use some gloves to protect my fingers because this is kind of paint that leaves your hand very very tinted, stained and it's hard to remove from your hands. Believe me, it's really hard to remove it from your hands. So if you have something different, if you have real chalk ink, that would be perfect. But I had to use again what I had at the hand and it worked. So what I did was I just used my fingers like this, just press the, sorry it's out of frame, I just press the pad and I started distressing these borders. A little bit also in the center a little bit more. It's better to take some a little bit of paint and then add more because you can't remove them the paint once you you've done it. Of course I had to remove this, I'll do that later. I just wanted you to see this and I don't want to make this video too long. So I did the same in the borders and in this crevices or whatever they are, the, the wood that is in between the wood. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea of you can do, you can add more, less, to get the, the final result that you are going for. So, the finished touch was to add something to the front. Let me cover this. And I printed on bedding paper this sign that I found on the internet. And I loved it. It says, excuse my French, literally, Cut Couture, <laughs> Charles uh, Frederick Worth. 1858 Paris and I'm going to add the last part of the sign that says I don't know how to say seven in French Rue de la Paix I'm going to apply this double sided glue to the whole area 
of this words of this printing like so let me turn this around okay I think that's enough and now I'm going to place it in the basket I'm going to put this in frame and I think here is going to be okay maybe in this area And now I'm going to add some of this Elmer's glue that I showed you before all over it to make sure that it is absolutely glued as I did with all the other parts of this sign. It was a whole sign that I cut into different parts to place every part in a different uh, part of the, <laughs> of the basket okay I dried all of them with the blow dryer I'm not going to do that now I'm going to let it dry I'll do this before showing you the final result but you can get the idea so this basket is finished and I forgot to show you my inspiration. Today I'm doing everything wrong. Again, from Mondas Life and Made, I used her bushel basket as an inspiration. Don't tell me this is not cute. This is the cutest basket I've ever seen. <laughs> it's adorable, adorable. She's so crafty. You have to watch this video, all the videos to see how she created everything, but especially this basket. So here you have all the items finished. Hope you like them. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber already and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much to Momdas for the inspiration. Please visit her channel. Thank you to the hostesses for hosting. Please visit their channels and watch the videos in the playlist. Thank you so much as usual to all of you for your constant support and watching my videos. Hope to see you in my next one and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye bye.